Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 1.30 to 2 p.m. session of the 2023 Open Seminar Community Conference. In this session, we are pleased to introduce the presentation, Building Empathy in the Virtual World. Our speakers are Elaine Hotter and Jeremy Finkelstein. Dr. Hotter is a senior lecturer at Talpiot College in Holon. She is known for her innovative approach to teaching, which focuses on creating inclusive and diverse learning environments. Jeremy has been developing virtual world environments for education since 2006. He specializes in creating interactive environments designed to assist and further the educational process with fun and immersive content. Please check out the website found at conference.opensimulator.org for speaker bios, details of the sessions, and the full schedule of events. This session is being live streamed and recorded, so if you have any questions or comments during the session, you may send tweets to at OpenSimCC with the hashtag pound OSCC23. Welcome everyone. Let's begin the session. Um, hi everybody. Um, my name is Elaine and this is uh, Jeremy and we're really excited because it's the first time we're presenting here in the, uh, for you in this conference, even though we've been on OpenSIM for a long time. Jeremy, will you tell everyone where you be when you began? Uh, yeah, a long time ago. Um, as Elaine said, this is our first time presenting at the conference, so just be gentle with us. Um, <laughs> but uh, a long time I've worked on many different projects evolving over time into, you know, much more uh, full blown courses, which one of which we're about to speak about. OK, so let's speak about it. Um, so let's go to the first slide. Um, we were given a, um, a job basically to to write a MOOC. I don't know how many, if you're all familiar with it, it's it's a massive open online course. Cosia edX, we, we worked for edX in Israel. And um, and I was just so up thinking about, oh no, these MOOCs are terrible. You just see videos, the, the learners are passive, the pedagogy isn't new, and most students don't even complete the course. So I started to think of a way to make it different, to take it from what's called a MOOC to a MOVE. In other words, a massive open online virtual environment. And um, so that's basically what we did. And the topic was um, intercultural education. Next slide. So uh, let's, uh, if you can all please click on your screen and get to see the promo demo. Everyone is talking about multiculturalism and cultural diversity. Everyone is talking about multiculturalism, but talking about it is one thing, and experiencing it is another. Welcome to Introduction to Multiculturalism the first MOOC in the world to use a unique interactive system that allows you to create a virtual character who can see, experience, talk, talk with, meet, and get to know people from other cultures in real time. This groundbreaking new course creates a world of learning experiences with simulations and role plays. You get to feel how it is to be someone else. The team of course developers include experts from eight institutions of higher education from different religions and cultural backgrounds. We invite you to join this unique interactive course, Introduction to Multiculturalism, all through the experience of an avatar. Register now. When Jeremy built the world, he built into to areas where six students would work together. So we, we open many worlds at the same time. Can we go to the next one? Now, uh, the whole thing about developing empathy is interesting and how have people done it in the past? The, the idea of the course is to teach uh, intercultural education, but um, 
within it, we wanted to use the virtual world to experience everything. Uh, but up until then, people taught, up until the type of thing we're talking about, people said, okay, if we're going to learn about empathy, let's say we're going to learn about tribes in Africa or whatever. So you learn about them, you watch videos about them. You could actually bring someone into the classroom to meet. You could have a project when you learn with the children or the students from that particular country. But what we're talking about is the last thing where not only can the groups be intercultural, but you actually get to experience what it's like to be somebody else. Next slide. So we took it in stages. The students shared personal experience. Maybe it was about bullying or things like that. Then they had simulations and role plays in the virtual world followed by interactive explanations and summaries, videos. And yes, fine, exactly, Lisa, you're great. <laughs> and then we had reflection uh, with yourself and also with the rest of the group and a discussion on the process that you went through. Uh, I think it will be clearer when, when you see a, a video about it. Can we have the next slide? Another right, video this here. is the, the, the main video. So if you can watch this video, all of you, and I think it will be much clearer. We live in a more global world, yet prejudice and racism is on the rise. How do the students in this course acquire the skills, the cultural competence, awareness and understanding the other? In order to accept and understand the other, it's not enough to learn about them to learn about the problems, the difficulties they face. We should be able to walk in their shoes and experience their lives. When we experience, we remember. We can experience, for example, what it's like to be disabled and discuss how we felt. We can be in a simulation where we become someone else, for example, a Syrian refugee in Europe, when we get to hear how people relate to us and don't accept us. Another example is becoming obese your avatar suddenly becomes really fat in a world where everyone is thin. These experiences form a lasting impression on the participants' lives. The target audience is students at academic institutions, teachers, employees in the social sectors and the public at large. What's the impact? After three courses in our pilot, one in each language with 350 students, the tests and quantitative data showed significant increase in empathy to others across the board, including different religions, cultural groups, LGBT and color, and a decrease in bias and prejudice. And this change continued eight months after the completion of the course. Wow, really amazing. Look what the students are writing. Ooh, very Ooh. Cool. So interesting. So in a nutshell, the students in this program learn about cultural diversity and experience it in the metaverse. They develop empathy for others and prejudices decrease. Well, it was great seeing you all. Come and drop by and visit us in the virtual world. Okay, let's continue. So, um, I just wanted to jump in before we continue while we're waiting for everyone to finish. Um, they, we have a special person in the audience who I haven't seen for a while, but she um, created some of the avatars for this program. Her name's Ada Radius here. So she did some wonderful, wonderful work on our avatars here. Okay, so um, I think it's clear in the, in the video, we, we basically spoke about empathy and uh, I, I will talk a bit I mean there's a we've mentioned a bit about the results but it was quite really inspiring for us to see that the impact of these uh, simulations there were all together five simulations within the course were much more powerful than we could ever have imagined now one of the um, We'd like to show you a, a part of one of these simulations, a bit different to the others, because it was um, uh, it was a matter of choice. You could choose three different options. Uh, I'll just explain, but just before it begins, uh, you the students, the people in the courses are actually people who are going to be teachers, and we wanted them to have some sort of experience about. Well, so many things can go wrong in the classroom. 
and how you're going to deal in the classroom with the situations. I mean, they learn about how children see the world in black and white and not so many gray areas. And it's, I belong to a group or it's my group. And if you have glasses, you're not part of my group. You know, how children work. And some people take it on to adulthood, which is a cause of many conflicts, but we won't go into that uh, today. But uh, what we want to show you in this short video is one of the options you could choose and what happens. Uh, so um, please uh, click on the next screen. I don't want to sit next to a smelly black boy. Me either. I also don't want to. The teacher doesn't care about me. I was really offended and hurt. Now the other kids will be angry with me and won't want to talk to me. This teacher is forcing us to do things we don't want to. I don't want to sit next to him. He's disgusting. In the break, we'll beat him up. Why isn't the teacher angry and why doesn't the teacher do anything about what happened? It makes me feel really bad. As you saw in the video, the gifted child, Rachel, suffers herself from discrimination and she is in a stage of survival herself. Remember that the attackers can also be in distress. On the one hand, do not compromise and do not give up. And on the other hand, support and be empathetic to all students. Uh, so you can see this is one of the three options. And we've got the kids replying, which you would never have in the classroom. You wouldn't really know what the kids are thinking and what's going on. Uh, it's, I, uh, it was enjoyable, I think, for the uh, student teachers. They had two simulations like this and different experiences working with the class. And the fact that we had experts there all the time telling them, explaining them what that what happens in their choice and what's going on it obviously adds knowledge at the same time but it's it's not just learning more it's related to what you chose it's more relevant to you personally now, within this this course there are um um seven units each one talking about a different aspect of intercultural education and the last unit instead of having an exam they have uh, an escape room they need to get out of. And each room of the seven rooms uh, deals with the material learnt in that unit. So it demands them, they really have to go uh, over everything to uh, the material beforehand. And as the student said, it's the first time they've come out of an exam smiling because it was really a fun experience at the end. They get the certificate and they've got through it. Um, a lot of fun things going on there at the same time. So, um, and Jeremy, uh, do you want to speak about, we've got five yeah. minutes left. So I, yes, just so I just wanted features. to add some, yes. some of the other things that they had to do. And one that I particularly loved was um, we built a little area which was a, a town square and it had like a cinema and a post office and shops, etc. And the students had to each sit in a wheelchair and they were given like a list of, uh, tasks that they had to do, like a to-do list, um, you know, go retrieve a package from the post office, etc. And they'd wheel around in their wheelchair and they'd find that it's incredibly difficult uh, to get up into the post office because that day when they went there, the ramp was closed for maintenance, um, for instance. Uh, they had to get on a bus, etc. Uh, and the students really felt like they were experiencing how difficult or somewhat how difficult um, it was to be in a wheelchair. They, and not just physically, it. right? Yeah. Not just physically, uh, emotionally, the way people treat you as if you don't exist and only speak to the person next to you, or they, they speak to you as if you're very slowly, as if, you know, you're mentally disabled as well. Uh, right. Uh, and we've done research on this, and uh, maybe we should show the next slide. Um, uh, so the students um, 
uh, had great things to say. And if you're interested in the academic side, we've published a few articles on this, also in virtual reality. Um, so um, this is like uh, what the students feel that... Um, Do you, do you want to read it out? Or should I? Yeah, I think like everyone can read it. I don't think I have to read okay. it out. Uh, but um, the students all said that it was much easier to remember. And uh, even though we asked students like a year and a year and a half after the course, they still, even today, if you meet these students, they're still convinced that they were disabled because of this experience. And um, just uh, on the just the last note, we will just uh, yeah. just put the last slide. Uh, actually, the course is up for um, uh, for the um, reimagine education, which are the Oscars of education, taking place this week. It's got to the finals for the course that teaches uh, values and ethics. So hopefully, uh, who knows? We might even win. So <laughs> we'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. I think that's. Uh... Well, we're almost at the end. We've got two, uh, one minute left, I think. So I, I just wanted to add that the course is also, it's not just in the in the virtual world. They also use uh, the MOOC for things as well. But um, you, the, when I was building it, we built an entire HUD around this so that the students could see what they were meant to be doing and where to go. And, and it, all the experiences worked through the HUD and the database collecting data on what they what they did in the task so that they could see what they've done and what uh, they still have to do. Um, it, it was a great experience working on this uh, project. Yes, and we've, we've got, if you come to our post, in, into our um, booth 17, there's uh, all the material there that you've been asking about and, and more. So um, we'll be only too pleased to, if you come there and uh, and if you're interested, I mean, it's open on edX. Anybody can take this course, so. Yeah. Oh, and one last thing. Tomorrow we have a, a, another presentation about one of our other courses, which is uh, teaching uh, spoken English, for, uh, advanced spoken English in the virtual world. Thank you, Elaine and Jeremy, for an informative and interesting presentation. I'm sure you saw in the comments and questions that Kaylee would like to see links to your papers. So if you have those in your booth, that'd be awesome. As a reminder to our audience, you'll want to check out the conference.opensimilar.org to see what's coming up on the conference schedule. You won't want to miss our next session, which begins at 2 p.m. in the keynote region, and it's entitled Virtual Vignette and the Animaster, Unleashing the Power of Animesh in OpenSim for Education and Entertainment. Also, we encourage you to visit the OSCC 23 Poster Expo in OSCC Expo Zone 3 region to find accompanying information on the speaker's content and explore the hypergrid resources in Expo 2, along with the sponsor and crowdfunder booths located throughout all of the OSCC Expo regions. Thanks again to Elaine and Jeremy and to our audience. <laughs>